Now, with this uh, model, we can appreciate the respiratory system, okay? And <clears throat> we have different parts to the respiratory system. First of all, we have over here uh, the larynx, all of this portion here is the larynx. We have the trachea. We have the bronchi, which we'll see soon when we open up the, uh, the lungs. And then we have our lungs. Okay. Now, if we look at the lungs, uh, the lungs are slightly different, uh, especially because the right lung consists of three lobes, superior, a middle, and an inferior lobe. And the left lung consists only of two lobes, a superior and inferior lobe. So you see these fissures here are separating the lobes. This is my superior lobe, my inferior lobe. And here with this side, with the right lung, we have three lobes. Okay, and these are the fissures that separate the lobes. Superior lobe, middle, and inferior lobe. Okay, so let's take the lobes, let's, take, let's open up the lungs. Okay, and now you can see much more clearly uh, the inside of the lungs. You can see the bronchi, and we can see this as well, the diaphragm muscle. Now, the diaphragm muscle will be important because it will contract and it will cause you to breathe in and to breathe out. That you will discuss more in respiratory physiology. Now, let's start up here in the top end of our respiratory system, okay? And you can see up here the, uh, this hole, which is the entrance into the trachea, okay? This hole right here is called the glottis, and it is protected by this cartilage right here, an elastic cartilage called the epiglottis. The epiglottis, what it will do is that it will close off the hole, it will cover the hole when you are swallowing food and liquids, so that food and liquids don't go down into your trachea. So this is your epiglottis, okay? Now the epiglottis, along with these other cartilages here, cartilage, 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 along with these other cartilages are going to form this little box-like structure called the larynx. So let's take this apart. Okay, let me put this on one side. I have another one that's already opened. Again, we said this was the epiglottis. We open it up and we can see the inner surface of the larynx and the trachea. This is part of the trachea here. And you see that these little blue, light blue colored structures represent cartilage, the cartilages of the larynx. This is your epiglottis. Again, if we close it up, the epiglottis looks kind of like a shoehorn. Epiglottis is actually an elastic cartilage. These other cartilages that you see here forming most of the framework, form most of the framework of the larynx, are hyaline cartilage. This one specifically here is the thyroid cartilage. It's the big one that you see in the front of your neck, the thyroid cartilage. Okay, Some of you know it perhaps as the Adam's apple, but the proper name is the thyroid cartilage. Slightly below that one here, you have another cartilage here. It's called the cricoid cartilage. Can we see the cricoid cartilage by opening up the model? Yes. You see right here a portion of the cricoid cartilage. This is a the dorsal portion of the cricoid cartilage. Okay, this is the thyroid cartilage right here. All of the thyroid cartilage. Uh, there's several other smaller cartilages that you cannot really see with this model, except for one, this little tiny one right here. This is the arytenoid cartilage, arytenoid cartilage. And this cartilage, if you follow it here, you can see how it is covered by mucosa. That little cartilage will actually move. It will open and close to allow separation of the vocal cords, the vocal cords during phonation, meaning when you're producing sounds with your voice, during voice production. So that little cartilage, the retinoid cartilage, will move and cause movement also of the vocal cords. Now, now that we're with this model, let's take a better look at the vocal cords. First of all, you have this vocal cord. This is the main one. It's the true vocal cord. The true vocal cord, okay? And then just above it, you have another vocal cord 
okay? It's called the false vocal cords. It's the true ones that actually are most important in voice production or sound production with your voice, also known as phonation. So it's the true vocal cords that are very important for singing, speaking, and so forth. Okay? Now, <clears throat> once we pass the larynx, we now enter into this region here, the trachea. So let's close this up again. You can see part of the trachea right here, the trachea. Here with this part of the model, you see the trachea here. Now the trachea consists of these uh, semicircular cartilage rings. These semicircular cartilage rings, okay, they're called the tracheal cartilages. They're semicircular, meaning that they're not completely closed off. They're open on the back so that they can allow the esophagus to stretch slightly when swallowing food. So when you swallow food, it comes down through the esophagus here, and it allows for the esophagus to expand slightly forward because this area is not a closed off, completely closed off area. There is no cartilage here. The cartilage is only the front portion of the trachea. So these are incomplete rings. Although with the model here, you do see some light blue here. However, that's not, re that's not represented cartilage, representing some other type of connective tissue. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the trachea then comes down this way, and just ab around this area, the trachea then bifurcates or splits into the primary bronchi. Primary bronchi. Bronchus means one, bronchi means many. So you have two primary bronchi, one for the left side of the, of the body, one for the right side or for the right lung. So this is my left primary bronchus, and you can see that it's slightly much longer than the right primary bronchus. Okay? Now, the primary bronchi then will branch out into these bronchi called secondary bronchi. Secondary bronchi. For the right lung, you will have two secondary bronchi, one corresponding to each of the lobes of the left lung. So in the left lung, you will have two secondary bronchi, one for superior lobe, one for inferior lobe. On the right lung, you will actually have three secondary bronchi, one corresponding to each lobe of the right lung. So here's the secondary bronchus, secondary bronchus, secondary bronchus. Now, the secondary bronchi will further branch out into another bronchi called tertiary bronchi. Can you see tertiary bronchi with this model? Let me try to point it out. This is the secondary bronchus secondary bronchus, all of this here, and here you see your tertiary bronchi. Tertiary, tertiary, tertiary. Now the number of tertiary bronchi will vary. It will vary. It could be uh, several different tertiary bronchi, so I will not give you an exact number how many. But you do have to know that there are, there's a right primary bronchus and two secondary left secondary bronchi. On the right side you have a primary bronchus and three secondary bronchi. One, two, three. Okay? And tertiary, the number will vary. So these are examples, good examples of tertiary bronchi. Now, the tertiary bronchi will further branch out into much smaller, tinier tubes. We call these bronchioles. Bronchioles. These are bronchioles. There's different bronchioles, there's large ones, small ones, and then the final, the final ones are called terminal and respiratory bronchioles, which are too tiny really to see with this model. So you can simply just say that these are bronchioles, which means small bronchi. Okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, what else can we appreciate from this model? We can also see here the... Uh, part of the esophagus. Esophagus comes down this way. 